Here is a close-up of a fractal dynamic field starting with a point from the inside of the Mandelbrot set. Each point represents one iteration or one time through the feedback loop. I connected consecutive points with lines so we can better understand how this dynamic is being formed. You'll notice that the points from this dynamic appear to be orbiting around and spiraling into a single point or singularity within the space-time continuum. Also, notice how the lines connecting the points are getting shorter or becoming more compressed as they get closer to the singularity at the center of this vortex. So, space and time are both contracting towards singularity. Interesting. Next, we're going to zoom into this vortex to see if we can find singularity. Here we are, traveling down what I like to refer to as a wormhole. The dynamic pretty much looks the same all the way down this quantum tunnel. It's a long way down. Then all of a sudden, near the end of this movie, something strange happens. The field starts to break down until it finally stops. Well, it doesn't really stop. What happens is that the vortex has gotten trapped in an infinite loop condition. So rather than continue to contract forever, it stops at a certain level and ends up cycling between a small set of points forever. I refer to this loop condition as a loop singularity. All fractal dynamic fields from the inside of the Mandelbrot set end in loop singularity. For example, a loop 2 singularity ends by looping between two distinct points forever. A loop 3 singularity ends by looping between three points endlessly, and so on. What is the significance of these loop singularities? Here are a few Every point on the inside of the Mendelbrot set produces a different one of these. At the end, it breaks up. That's like a loop 12 singularity or something. <laughs> the graph on the left is a picture of a loop 3 singularity as seen at the quantum level. It's here at the end of the wormhole or quantum tunnel that you see the breakdown of the fractal dynamic field. The three circled points in this image represent the final loop singularity, the final three points in the field that loop endlessly. The graph on the right is called a spin network and was developed by Sir Roger Penrose in the early 1970s. A spin network is a tool used in quantum mechanics to represent states and interactions between particles and fields at the quantum level. The similarity of these graphs and the fact that they both represent something at the quantum level of a system makes me wonder what other similarities I might find between my model and the universe we live in. Further investigation required. Next, I wanted to see how the dynamics evolved over time, so I picked a point in space, then ran it along the time direction to see what would happen. For each point along that line, I generated and plotted the fractal dynamic field for that point. So instead of just one field, I generated a set of fields in series. Here are the results of that experiment. We seem to be seeing a continuum of activity going on here, and it's not linear activity either. I see movement and orbits and attraction and repulsion. Also, this pattern is very similar to the images that are produced in particle accelerators. 
where they smash charged particles together and then watch the patterns that they make using a device called a bubble chamber. The bubble chamber was invented in 1952 by Donald A. Glazer, for which he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1960. Notice the similarity between the real bubble chamber image on the left and the one that I generated on the right. Also, notice the similarity in the background noise between these images. Here's one that looks a lot like magnetic fields showing clear evidence of charged particle dynamics in my model. Next, I wanted to see what kind of image would appear if I chose random space-time fluctuations over the complex space. For each random fluctuation, I would then generate the field for that point. Note that some of the points will be from the inside of the Mandelbrot set, and some points will be from the outside. The image on the next page will show the results of this experiment. Ready? Mm -hmm. I promised you I was going to generate a universe from scratch, right? <laughs> My God, it's full of stars. <laughs> that we know of, even some really obscure ones that I'll be showing you shortly.